to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with John and Britt and Riley. Mike, of course. I prefer to drink my beer out of the skulls of my dead enemies. Thank you. <laughs> That's a crystal gauntlet, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Skull gauntlet. Crystal skull. Crystal yeah. skull. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just so everybody knows, you know, how angry I can get. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, one of the, the, the unaccounted for? Yeah, 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 yeah. Skulls. No, this was, uh, <laughs> I can't tell you where I have it hidden. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere in Tucson, right? Yeah, somewhere in Tucson. <laughs> <laughs> There's a deep, dark cave between way, way two, down. Between Tucson and Arizona. So so what are you drinking out of the skull of your Oh, enemy? Uh, the skull of my dead enemies. I'm drinking um, Pompous Ass from uh, San Marcos Brewery. Nice. Uh, I'm a big fan of the San Marcos Brewery. You know, there's there's a uh, whole lot of different beers that I enjoy and like a whole lot. But if I ever sit back and go, what is a beer that I really think is delicious? Uh, is uh, Old Goats and Oats from uh, San Marcos Brewery. Love it. It's it's a meal in a bottle. Mm. It's delicious. <laughs> it tastes exactly what it is. It's an oatmeal stout. It tastes like oatmeal. It's wonderful. So, but yeah, this is Pompous Ass by the same brewery. Also incredibly good. They're good people, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, so tonight we're talking about family, togetherness, familia, <laughs> oh, community. So, so, my, so uh, John and I were talking the other night, and the question came up: Do you think that there's a concerted effort on the part of whoever to destroy the nuclear family? Yes. I don't think it's concerted effort. I think it's kind of half-assed. Like I think they have bigger priorities. No, no, I think they have bigger priorities. But part of it is making sure that like you don't have uh, a, a structure outside of the state. I just don't think that that's their main focus is destroying the family. But that's definitely something that will help their. It's on the agenda. It's on the. On it's the on the agenda, but it's more like <laughs> number three instead of number one. Uh, you know. So. Yeah, so why? I, I, yeah. Hmm? Why? Why would they do that? Well, because if, if you don't have a, a structure of people that will help you, empathize with you, uh, have similar beliefs, viewpoints that you do, et cetera, or at least be able to understand what you're saying, then you're going to go to the, the, the people who are saying, we'll feed you and clothe you and help you. And that provide usually, you entertainment. Yeah, that usually being the state. You know, yeah. Hey, we'll give you free shit if you just, you know... Obey us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, oh. <laughs> Is that copyrighted material? I don't think so. <laughs> I <It> hope not. <laughs> Let me take care of this little nuisance here. I honestly don't give a shit, but you, <laughs> YouTube does. But YouTube's been known. Apparently, if you would talk about war, they'll just like shut us down. Heard yeah. that. We yeah. should have an episode about war. Yeah, we should just entitle it war. See if we yeah. can get shit off. So, what is it? Can we entitle it war? Dot, dot, dot. What is a good point? Absolutely. Yes, yes, yeah, that'll be but the that's best. that's not this top yeah. tonight. So, not tonight, but... So granted, ultimately, I'd say know. that the the state generally is taking either the, the paternal role or the maternal role. It's a maternal identification or a maternal identification that most people who are political have. You know, so they believe that uh, the state should be the daddy. You know, pull your, pull your britches up and confront the world like a man or a disciplinarian or they identify Protector. yeah they identify Protector, the yeah, maternal role security. of nurture and uh, uh, protect and all that jazz care lace, care. Up, lace up your boots and go right. kill the enemy kill 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 so with a fragmented right. family it, you increase the chances that the individual is going to identify with an external an outside source for paternal or maternal identification uh, so yeah, I think it's definitely within their interest to actively destroy the family. The state will simultaneously make you healthy and teach you to be a man. Essentially, that's kind of like the propaganda of like stick with us. Or a well, woman. yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 the, yeah, exactly. You know, the 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 either way, there there's there's your stereotypes that they that they are prom- are promoting to be a certain way because. It fits, uh, you know, a, a vague idea of 
you know, past norms and they continue the ones that are, are profitable for their venture of, well, you know, control and, uh, and attempt to snuff out the ones that are not profitable to control. Profitable is the wrong word, but, but, uh, um, oh, damn, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, to, conducive. uh, conducive. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Conducive works fine. Thank so, you. <laughs> I, I'm ready to just dive right into the most controversial part of this right now <laughs> and say, have any of you ever heard of Betty Friedman? No. Negative. No. Sounds so, familiar, but I don't know why. So, Betty Friedman founded the National Institute of Women. Okay. Wrote a book called Feminine Mystique. Right. Okay. It's coming back to me now. I have right, heard right, of this. Right. Uh, late 50s, early 60s. Yeah. Okay. okay. But she pioneered all of the, pretty much every aspect of the destruction of the family. It's okay. probably safe to say she did it with federal money. Just so. <laughs> <laughs> Gloria, Gloria Steinem uh, admits it, absolutely, right? So Who's that? She's also one of the queen pins of feminism. She was the director of now... Um, um, organization for women, and, and also um, she was the chief editor for Cosmopolitan magazine. Oh, oh wow. wow! What a queen that's, thing! That says, <laughs> that says a lot, actually. Yeah, with that's all those wives right. reading yeah. the Cosmopolitan, or so I have, have you females. Uh, so essentially, the what what we find is men becoming feminized, mm. women becoming masculinized, masculinized mm. uh, the roles becoming blurred. Mm. In society, mm. uh, this is controversial. Women, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> women joining the workforce, uh, inflating the the labor pool, mm. Mm. so you can have cheaper labor. Mm -hmm. um, but and a broader mm. tax base, and a broader mm. tax base, and kids in the school system, and kids and, in and the school system, and mm -hmm. liberty at the same time. <laughs> well. <laughs> If you're on a roll, Steve, continue. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, go ahead. Break on in. Well, I just think that's like a, a nice cover for it all, right? It's like freedom. Right. Well, this is what freedom looks uh, like. Freedom well, for yeah. women. For equality. Right. Yeah. When yeah. you, when you uh, masculinize women, essentially, effeminate. Anyway, I won't get. Yeah, yeah. You end up destroying the nurture aspect. Of potentially, yeah. Potentially, right. So right. Te te technically, we should be balanced, and males and females both embrace the concept of nurturing and both, it, both uh, embrace the concept of uh, uh, basically um, protector. Right. Right. And uh, when you obfuscate the, those aspects, then you produce children that are really game, really op prime for being swooped up and, and, and guide to the destination of whomsoever's, whoever's choosing. Yeah. It's like a, it's an imbalance type deal. Right. And, uh, yeah. Well, if the parents aren't raising the children, somebody's got to. And well, that's true who too. else is going to, who's going to step, step in, in right. but the government? Right. Daddy government. Yeah, or, or mommy, mommy government. government. Or mommy government. It doesn't really matter because yeah. they're in bed together. I mean, that's like we can see that, right? You know what I mean? So they polarize the people with a false dichotomy, and people fight left and you know blue and red, left and right, whatever, and they're too Maybe. damn busy seeing that they're going down the same road to the same destination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, distracted. Mm -hmm. So, so he, here's where my question comes in is it a bad thing that the nuclear family is being destroyed like is what is there a good side to that is the nuclear family really the pinnacle of human social interaction order and like kind right. of groundwork for framing up how right or is there a better better a better way of organizing. So if um, obviously the state's not the right way. I spent right. a little bit of time looking into the the, the origins of uh, the nuclear family. Um, I'm sorry, real quick. Uh, the elderly is another example 
of we're passing them off into you know institutions institutions to be taken care of the when children. they're too old to take care of themselves rather than the children be taking care of them in their that was modeled to the children being put into an institution right 15,000 hours so it's only natural it's not even outrageous to think that when the they come of age that they'll in turn do the same thing to their elderly, outsource the care of and the responsibility of the care of the elderly. Mm -hmm. Grandpa, we love you, so let's put you in an apartment at home where they serve you unseasoned mm -hmm. ham. That, yeah. I mean, as if you've ever been to like a retirement home and eaten there, like that's exactly, the food is, here's some ham and here's like some salt and pepper if you want to add something to it like it's really some, like some bread you know it, it, mm, you know if bread it, and water if you end up in a situation <laughs> where bread. you know somebody feels that they have to put their 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 parents or their grandparents into like like you know a, a, a retirement home or something like you know you're you're being charged thousands and thousands of dollars for them to be you know more or less like kind of treated okay like it's really sad that you know not, they're, they're, not you know, even usually yeah kind of treated no, well, that's what though. I'm saying like you know like you're paying like even for like the you know like something that's on like the cliffs of Malibu or something and you're paying thousands of thousands of dollars or something let's say if you could afford that and like gram you know grandma or or mom or something is just like oh yeah here's some my like, crappy food and you know you've got a nice view right don't complain this is Malibu whatever you know they come up with some excuse for to charge a whole bunch of money to not really take care of somebody yeah I think you probably have a ranging scale of better places compared to worse places but I know like it's like anything with humans and and the way you know not to you know get dogmatic on human nature or anything but the way humans can be when I think it's just part of being human that when we have unacknowledged and unconscious frustrations that we can tend to take them out on the most helpless people or things and like animals is a prime example of children and the elderly right and so it, it, those kinds of places become a breeding ground uh, particularly like um, like Randy here was saying you don't really need like any truly outstanding qualifications to be a caregiver at such a place and yet, you, know, you can get a job there relatively easily and, and not needing such uh, of a background or, you know, licensing or what have you, some kind of qualifications. And then frustrated people take their frustrations out in unconscious and unhealthy and abusive ways where these elderly people are being taken care of. And the same things at schools, to be honest. Like, my experience at educational systems was a lot of really... I don't know, seemingly unindividuated, frustrated, pent up teachers giving me shit because I represented in some manner of expression what they, you know, longed for of being able an to individual. be once again. Yeah, an individual <laughs> and useful <laughs> and, you know, an unknown future where there was so determined and How fucking depressed. Have you made it this far down the production line? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> being you, you know? Yeah. Well, you know there's Back there with the long hair. I wish I you seemed you happy. I can't be because I'm stuck yeah. in my miserable situation. And so they go on strike even though they're shit, you know, not worth a shit as a teacher. And they fucking... Oh, God, I don't even want to get started on that road. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, so... E one thing I wanted to say in regards to this question of, you know, the breakdown of the nuclear family or the family structure and its, uh, you know, advantageous developments for the state potentially is, I think, you know, when you look at, it, like, Agenda 21, that's part of the agenda of Agenda 21 is redefining the family. Um, you know, like, your kids aren't your kids, they're our kids. And, uh, you know... Our kids, in, as in the government's kids. The government, well, yeah, the government's kids. You know, everyone. Society's there's collectivism. Kids, yeah. You know, there's broad collectivism that isn't tempered with in the East. Like me and John and others have been having this conversation recently. Whereas the East is a very collective, much more collectivistic type of approach to society. But they're also tempered with thousands of years of integration and honesty and integrity, and you know, Ethics, behaviors right. being more important than ideologies. Whereas we in the West, you know, as long as you believe the right things, you're going to get into the right places. As long as you know the right people, you're going to be in the right position. Whereas your behavior doesn't really qualify you or disqualify you for anything. So you can pretty much get away with anything as long as you get away with it. It's okay. And, uh, and don't make the group look bad. And as long as you don't make the group look bad or the state, you know, as long as you're not going against the grain in that regards, 
you'll have a safe place with us. But once you start, you know, I, I don't know. It's just. So uh, once again, it comes down to collectivism. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. the negative aspects More of collectivism, because collectivism could potentially be a beautiful thing. Like if we're truly caring about each other and taking care of each other, that's a solid under a thing. voluntary oh, that's under a voluntary voluntary yeah. framework. Right. Framework. That's a beautiful thing. I think and that might authority. be a topic for another night. Right. Yeah, but but insofar as we're talking about authoritarian volunteeristic, your family, your kids aren't your kids. They're the state's kids or the, the collectivity's kids. Then you could get pressing into issues of, you know, just violation of liberty and human freedom. Well, you know, like even like little aspects you mentioned, like the the, the agenda twenty one stuff, which you know I I think uh, I thought was 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 bunk for a while. I'm like, this is just some weird like it's theory that somebody's come up with. And then I'll never forget. Um, <laughs> Matt's not here tonight, which is really unfortunate. But uh, Steve, you're there. There are two like uh, uh, Matt's. Uh, uh, Dad Joe, who who was involved in the city council of a local town somewhere near or maybe not near where we didn't film the show, uh, you know, was you know at you know some sort of meeting and he comes back and he's like, hey, you guys know about Agenda Twenty One? I'm like, yeah, that's like some like kind of like weird theory that I never really heard any real facts behind. And he's all like, oh yeah, apparently that's uh, pretty real. I'm like, what makes you say that? And he just drops. Bam! On the table, we're all sitting there talking about it. Just straight up school textbook that says Agenda 21 for kids on it. I'm like, holy it's fuck. It's like a teacher's <laughs> handbook. <laughs> like yeah. no, it wasn't a teacher's handbook. It was like the, the book they give to kids. Like, here, this is what you're learning today. Do your questions in this book. I'm like, holy shit. You know, but... Um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I like the Agenda 21 like thing. pictures from, explaining From what I remember of that evening was that it was a no, teacher's yeah, 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 yeah. okay, right. handbook teacher's handbook on how to teach agenda 21 to kids and it's all about yeah you know, i think you're right. the expansions of the desert and the degradation of the environment which are all true <laughs> you know these are all true and very valid concerns Whoa, which man. any rational human being should give issue to or you know, right. you know be concerned thought about, right? to be concerned yeah. about in a very real practical way but, but it's it was, not about the environment for them. No, it's not. It's about control. It's well, about, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, about, I'm sorry yeah. to say it. Yeah. Well, about, I had to be like, about, no, I, I don't, you know, because here's a, it's a fine line because sustainable development. It's, it, it, sustainable development is the only rational way to go. Let's be real. We don't want to sustain right, but, susta but sustainable develop development unsustainable. for them is something completely different. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. like yeah. Su sustainable <laughs> development would be like you know we're talking about families, right? So you know like sustainable uh, st sustainable development. Excuse me. Would you know would be something Something like okay, so you've got your house, and let's say you it's know not your you, house. Well, you know, no, no, no. Let's look, sorry, like sustainable go. development, like in a rational world, is so you, you have your house that. and you have your property, you know, and you you could you know have enough acreage to like grow something, and maybe you have a couple of kids, whatever. Hey, like you know, we're gonna grow some stuff, you know, we're gonna be sustainable, you know, grow our own food no, as much as we, as much as we can, right? But sustainable de development or the whole Agenda Twenty One nonsense is move into the city, fit yourself into this tiny little apartment, and live right next to the railroad tracks because that's the only way you get around because cars are way too expensive for you. As a matter of fact, they're too polluting. So you know, it's it's sustainable development. If you're growing your own food that you don't need, guess what's not happening? You're not having as many like trucks delivering food, so there's actually less pollution if you're doing it yourself. But no, you have to go live in this little box in the, Whoa, in the city. A, that's and, an interesting you know, point. Like, slave I'll, quarters. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, also, it's real life, though. I think like Britt would have something valuable to say here about the KNER, which is to bring you in on it, right? <laughs> if you feel uh, like running with that. So um, what is this? K N E R. So uh, this is a, a series of videos that Stefan Molyneux uh, made this summer, and it's on uh, RK selection theory. Um, these are reproductive strategies that uh, I think I guess biologists uh, have just found in the natural world. Hmm. Um, R would be this is what, what what certain animals tend to do. Right. Okay. Yeah. All so right. these these are their reproductive strategies. Mm -hmm. uh, the R strategy would be your rate of production. Okay. And uh, so exactly, yeah. <laughs> your rabbits, your roaches, etc. Correct. Okay. Rabbits. Right. So, um, so th it's I just you know, <laughs> put them out as many as you can. Um, if uh, you, get, you if if your buddy gets eaten, don't try to save him. Just run off. There, 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 <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's no loyalty there. There's uh, he didn't make the cut today. Uh, walking there, there's there's no real uh, there, um, 
choosing your mate. You know, there's no uh, monogamy in, in, in our selection. It's just, you know. Just he, she's good so, enough. Right. right. Yeah, okay. If it's just then, green, as much green, as you see green. out there as possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, sorry. Lock um, hard guy. If it's and, green, and children it, will, uh, run you know, um, will be up, be up soon on their feet, you know, quickly. Uh, there's not a lot of raising your, your, your kids. So that's the R uh, strategy. And then the K strategy is more of a uh, predator type strategy where yeah. there is a, a long raising process from birth to uh, adulthood. There's, uh, there's a lot of care and, and um, being them that they really can't, you know, eat when they first come out. So you're uh, taking a lot of time to, to feed them and then teach them how to um, survive. Right. So, um, so, I think, so I think, they, they I think through the media, what, uh, and, and entertain, entertainment especially, is uh, it all comes out, um, as far as the mainstream goes, it's all just promoting the our, our strategy. Right. So, so it's just, hmm. you know. Yeah, but, yeah, just pumping it's all around. awesome, right? I, I think reproduction. What should be said is that these are all, these are gene sets that are, reside in humans, right? So you, rabbits act like rabbits, wolves act like wolves these lower level conscious creatures mm. are slaves to their genes, whereas humans can actually turn on and off gene sets. Right. So and, epi, or they could, be, prog or they could be programmed yes. externally to do right. the same yeah, thing. So, right. so yeah, you have your environmental factors that, that play into that. And it's not actually just humans. Uh, one example was uh, opossums that had moved from oh, yeah. mainland to an island um, had to ditch their R strategy. They became more K-like. Mm. Interesting. And, uh, okay. So that that's uh, yeah. It was resource driven. That's the way. Played, exactly. Right. Yeah. Mm. Right, yeah. So driven, so right. yeah. Your R so, strategy. So the lesser <laughs> the lesser resources, the animals tend to follow K strategy. So is, is correct. That right? Yeah. Scar okay, more right. scarce so resources leads to more K right. strategy. Mm. Plentiful resources are going to lead to your R strategy. Interesting. Right. So um, when you have easy mean, resources provided by the state, typically in the wild, you're. You know, you're you're promoting a, an R, the, uh, an R right. strategy. So this so. is tie it back, right? It's also it's all about genetically carrying forward your DNA. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it's all, you know, hardwired in. Hardwired in. Mm -hmm. How do you get your seed to go forward? Your 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 posterity. Mm. Continue the species, carry on. So, so, in, <laughs> so I was, I was like whispering to Steve here that so that means that animals are doing better in the wild than humans are doing better in the cities because humans follow the K, whereas animals in the wild tend to follow the R. Not necessarily. Wrong? No, it, it really uh, again depends on where in the terms resources. of resources. Right. But the point is, I think, is but <laughs> epigenetically talking about epigenetics rather from a eugenics perspective, it would if you're a central planner who's wanting to guide mankind in a sustainable direction, right. it would benefit them to have a bunch of ours that are, don't have a, fa a strong familial connection. Mm. Yeah. They're out there doing their own thing. They're yeah. individual producers, individual purchasers, consumers, you know, driving GNP up. D and dependence is, is important to them. Yeah. Right, yeah. and also people who don't have it could be argued that if they don't, they aren't, they don't have a strong family bond. Not only is it good for the economic numbers, it's also good because they're more likely to uh, to identify with a parental state, right? So a a, a, a maternal or, or paternal parent figure in the state. Because they're missing that. And they're missing that. Especially if you get like the the the. Uh you know, in institutionalization in there like early on. You know, the the right. uh, the daycare sort of a thing. Which I mean, I don't want to sit there and say like, okay, you know, you send your you know your head start. Yeah, or you you send your you know your kid to you know a, a family or something. And so it's like, well, we'll watch him while you're at work, whatever. I'm not saying that that's wrong, but you know the the you know your your weird like corporate like, hey, there's this is your daycare center. You know, here's your monthly fee, whatever, of a couple hundred dollars to watch your kid during the... Well, you know, what is that exactly when it's just like, you know, they're, they're, they're hiring, you know, uh, most likely, you know, a couple of girls, maybe a guy or two, like, out of high school. Hey, you know, watch the kids. Make sure they don't, you know, break everything and go crazy. Well, what are they doing? Well, here's your TV. Here's, uh, 
you know, you hear some blocks, I guess. You know, they don't really care. They're, they've got their weekend job of whatever they're doing. Kid goes home, what is the kid learning all day? The kid's not really learning anything. And if anything, mm -hmm. it's, it's they're learning be dependent on somebody else outside of your family because that's who they're around most part of the day. Which that, that adds a whole different angle. Of learning how to externalize their self-esteem. Learning how to... Well, and look at the, look at the school schedule, too. You have kids going to school after parents are already at work, coming home, bef or coming home before. So you have after-school programs as well, mm -hmm. uh, and the parents at work all day, away from the kids. So who's raising the kids? It's the after-school programs. It's the schools. It's the before. School programs. Whether they're getting Agenda 21 handout manual. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, 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 and look at, look at the typical American family. It's like, oh, thank God the school, the school. Otherwise. Is, uh, summer's over and so the kids are going back to school uh, so I don't have to put up with them right. anymore. Right. You know? When, when a lot of times it's just, oh, uh, just, Here's the TV. Leave me alone. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, like, as someone like who all these different people are raising the children uh, so many other times. As someone who homeschools, I can tell you that I hear a lot uh, of parents say, "I just couldn't do that." Right? They, they, I couldn't homeschool. They couldn't homeschool. Right. I don't have the patience for it. I don't have the ability. So, in other words, because they come up through the system, they doubt their own ability to teach. <laughs> right? right. That's where right. it starts. Right. right? Yeah. It, and yeah. Right. And so, since they've come up through there, and, and they have been away from children so much, now they realize they don't have the patience to be around them for mm -hmm. all that much. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 a they can't stand their old self. It's a toilet bowl, right? Yeah, a spiral. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what is it? Uh, uh, obedience, apathy, and authority, or, mm -hmm. or uh, obedience, apathy, and conformity. Excuse me. Sorry. Right. For, exactly. The, yeah, yeah. For uh, the function. Uh, yeah. For, yeah. For, for for public schools and all that. That's mm -hmm. essentially what it teaches when you really know it. Down. One thing, for you know, it might not be significant at all, but one thing that this makes me think of this question of you know, the nuclear family is Carl Jung's writings about the archetypes and how father. He's more than a father. It's like when you're a child, when you're an infant, it's like a god who's you know providing you every need, it's keeping you alive. It's where you can, and the mother is like a god, right? It's like the goddess. And then if that breaks down for the for the individual child as they're you know growing into adolescence or whatever, if it's like non-existent, there's that complete like you know, schism, right? That occurs. And so like going back to what you're saying, John, is basically ultimately what it comes to is. Looking for that then in the state, right? The state becomes the father archetype or the mother archetype. It becomes the demigod um, that's going to provide for the needs. It's going to protect the security. It's going to provide for that. Um, and so it just lends itself into the state becoming this progenitor, or, you know, or the, assuming the role of, of those, those very fundamental uh, psychic architectures of, of you know, understanding oneself. Archetypes of understanding oneself. So, yeah, I think it's you know, I don't put it past the state to be uh, having it on the agenda. I think it's very much on the agenda. And I just, as you're saying that, I was just thinking about how it's doubled down when almost all children are taught might is right mm. through parental authority, right? Oh, yeah. Ultimately, yeah. Right, 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 right. And and that's one of the points I wanted to get to too. Is that the whole, you know, statism starts with at home. Right. Yeah. So, so it ends sure. up being this vicious cycle. Yeah. yeah, it's a funnel right into the <laughs> right to where we're going. Go, yeah. go from one set uh, of ultimate authority, you know, not not the the kind of more ra rational sense of like, well, your parents are there to make sure you know you don't instruct you, you know to, yeah you don't stick a you know some tweezers in the light socket or a penny in the light yeah. socket you know the 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 the, the, the protector mindset. Rather than you know, they, they, they for a lot of at least Western civilization, it's been like, well, they're not just your protectors; they tell you what to do. You listen to them yeah. above all. You know, the, the you know shit. This goes back to the weird concept back that they had in the Roman times of paterfamilias. You know, that the head of the household is the head of the household, mm -hmm. and anything he says goes. Roman, to the, like, Roman citizens, male citizens, could kill their wives and children. <laughs> It, it, yeah, it wasn't practiced very often, but yeah, that was the legal <laughs> precedent. Good, but yeah, yeah, the pattern familiar is the head of the household. Good, good, yeah. Well, that's yeah. outrageous. Ultimately, I would bet it probably resembled like, uh, 
uh, ultimately he was the one accountable under the law. Right. I, would, I would assume, right? right. That, that they, yeah. were, they weren't. Yeah, that they, they, that were, they were. It wasn't. It wasn't until later on in the actual like imperial period where like women had were right. had property rights and all right. that. But uh, it, 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 what it, what it brings to me is like I'm sitting here thinking like, well, okay, so. Um, if there was a family that were to purchase like a robot, right? You know, to, to, to do like you know, the household things and all that sort of stuff. So what what happens if you know the 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 the, the at this point the poor teenage boy is, is somehow attracted to this robot because the robot has certain orifices that will do the job? You know, is that is that something that is needs that to immoral? be addressed? I mean, yeah, is that immoral? Is it, I don't. Yeah, can, can, can the can the robot consent to that, or can the robot be like, you know, no, you're. What if he forces himself upon the robot? That. That's the, ro is the robot well, sentient. Isn't that, yeah, is, is that still part of the oh, nuclear family, family model, right? Well, oh, yeah, I mean, Ro Rosie, remember Hold Jetsons, on, right? That's yeah, yeah. a compelling oh, question. Oh, <laughs> shit. Well, we're, we're out of time for tonight, but we might want to pick this up another time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely get back to the robot sex. <laughs> <laughs> one of these days. For sure. I think we can get to that. Have a good one. Peace. Take care. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. And Halloween? this is where this is where what is it? Where uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not filming. When did we film this? It stopped filming 22 minutes ago.